Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lemmy and Finister. It's been a long time since I did a video with you. We are in Michelle's studio, and I'm not too enthusiastic about this place. Personally, I think it's kind of ugly. Because <laughs> um, I liked the old couch when we had better because I felt more like I was more like spending time and talking with you in, in a formal setting. This is definitely more of a formalized uh, structure than I'm used to. On top of that, we're using a program called, um, well, it comes to the Formax Studio, which is the uh, studio TVR program. Michelle said to me that um, we can't guarantee that the new PAL camera is going to work without a hitch with VD. And so she said we need to consider using um, other programs to do the video capture. She said that it has worked for some things, but not as well as it could. And so I said, all right, fine, we'll try it and see what it does. Today we're going to talk just, just kind of kicks and tires and, and just wanted to let you know what's going on. Michelle, of course, has been, uh, is getting ready for the convocation coming up on the 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when she's going to be doing the recording and, of course, in addition to the convocation on the 20th uh, for YouTube, there will also be a, a little more of a local convocation at the Open Door Soup Kitchen here at Winstead. That will be on the 21st, about 11 a.m. Eastern Time here in the United States of America. So if you, if you are in the Winstead area and you would like to see the live convocation, you can come to the Open Door Soup Kitchen, which is at the intersections, or right next to St. James Episcopal Church. It will be um, between Walnut and Oak Street. So you can watch the convocation live there, too. And um, it's it's going to be more of a localized and be focusing more on the local issues. Other than that... Um, you know, as I as I said, I don't really like the studio that much. I think it looks kind of austere. Um, I don't feel I have the same kind of uh, environment that I have um, when we're doing the videos and the um, other setup. Of course, the cats are here, and got Rusty the cat, and of course, Fan the cat. Yeah, he's grown. He's not no smoke getting anymore. He's a young, he's a young, he's a young Tom. He's, he's very well behaved. I'm like, I haven't seen you in a while. You know, he's grown. And he's, um, he's a big cat now. And, um, he's also very heavy. Um, so anyway, the point is, is that uh, the studio, as much as I don't like it, of course, Michelle says it's better because it's got better lighting. However, I personally wonder if we could have taken some of the technology that we put into the studio and put it into the other studio. Instead, it would make it look a little bit better. Some people liked the old studio. They really did. They they liked the fact is that it got a chance to show a lot of Michelle's personality in it. And I agree. The problem is, is that they've also said a few comments about Michelle, which I'd like to answer. Um, number one comment. This is from one of the, occasionally you get these comments. They come in. They come. They try to be mean. Um, and Michelle said to me, "Well, so for us comments that are trying to be mean, let's try to answer them honestly." Quote, of course you don't mind being the snow queen. You don't mind the cold because you got enough fat to keep you warm. Well, let me just explain one thing to you. Michelle is trying very hard to work on losing that weight. Um, it's not easy because, you know, like a lot of people in the city, you know, she's pretty much sedentary. She tends to sit around a lot. And when she does that, of course, you know, she gets bored. Um, especially if she's watching a lot of TV shows and a lot of stress. And so, of course, she hits the refrigerator and hits the Cumberland Farms, gets munchies, comes back, chews, chews them up. And, um, you know, buys chips and cookies and ice cream and cake and everything else. And she gets free things in the soup kitchen. I, I have to tell you that Michelle, however, has always been a concern about her weight. Um, even when she was younger, Michelle had always had a weight issue. It just has, of course, as you get older, and if your weight issue was never really controlled as a child, it definitely 
can get out of control very quickly as an adult. Um, stress is definitely a key factor between a lot of weight loss, uh, weight gain for a lot of people. Um, other thing is, is that in our income bracket, the food is just not healthy. Um, the amount of salts, trans fats, fats, sugars, um, carbohydrates is astronomical. We we checked out the home number of calories and things like like Doritos and and uh, you know uh, Swiss cake rolls and uh, store bought donuts and everything else. And Michelle just said this is, this is ridiculous. We can't really find anything in our price tag we can afford, and that's a problem because. Um, as it's all since been Michelle and I were studying this earlier, is that there is a huge number of people now in the United States who are very dependent on entitlement programs such as food stamps. They are finding themselves unable to buy healthy food um, because the food stamps program, which is called the Supplemental Nutrition Access Program, or SNAP, has been cut so much. Um, there was a cut that happened in October, which Michelle lost two dollars. Big deal, right? Well, okay, two dollars Michelle out of sixteen, so fourteen versus sixteen, not really a big deal. But now, if you got a family of a family of four, two adults and a, and, a, and two children, um, it's going to be a lot more of a uh, change. And it's, of course, is causing people to seriously question about what they should do. Should they use their money to buy food, or should they use their money to pay the rent? Um, unfortunately for many people, they are finding themselves having to make a very painful decision, which unfortunately has resulted in a lot of them being displaced from their homes. Um, Michelle and I also discussed is what can we do as a way to let people know how we feel about it. I like to focus on the religious side and spiritual side of things. Michelle tends to focus more on the practical, so I'm not going to go too much in the practical part of it because, except to say this, you have to do what you got to do. It's it's not a matter of choice. You go hungry, you're going to die. Okay, you don't pay your rent, you're going to freeze. It's 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 a, it's a kids twenty two, but maybe again this is where Mother Us and Father Yahweh come in is that as long as you have a strong faith system and a strong community behind you, you can make it. But if you can't get the community behind you to help you, you're gonna you're gonna just you're just gonna die. Okay? It's that simple. You don't have the community effort, you don't have the community support. You're you saw it green, okay? That's how bad it's gonna be. People are really desperate right now. Um, as Michelle pointed out earlier today, um, I don't think Michelle put the video up on um, uh, YouTube yet. She pointed out that she's glad that the, the Democrats and Republicans came up with a two-year budget plan. But um, a lot of people, especially the Democrats, are angry with the Republicans because they don't think it went far enough and took away too many entitlements. And, the Republicans kind of are happy with it. They think it's a pretty good plan. I'm going to just tell you, I don't know, care who what the plan is right now, but I'm going to tell you, like a lot of people, I think we have to depend on each other more than government entities to keep us going. I can't see how we can keep depending on a government system that clearly has lost its information of saying is that we are, you work for us. I mean, you, we put you in office and we put you there because you said that you'll protect the common good of the people. And yet you sit there and you worry about protecting all these big corporations. And like Michelle said on Thanksgiving, you know, the, these corporations can protect themselves. They got money to burn. We don't, the poor people don't have that privilege. Also for Sherry, uh, another local person named Sherry who is, um, creating premise for Michelle because Michelle said that she wants to help out one of the homeless people in the area. I think that you should at least be thankful that somebody is concerned about um, his, Mike's concern about Mike's welfare. I think that you need to back away and stop being um, so concerned about him. You've got a husband, you have a family. I think you should focus on your issues and let Michelle take care of the things that she feels is an issue that she can deal with. I don't think it's our place, and I say our, I mean me and you, 
to sit there and tell Michelle that she's not doing a good thing. Michelle works for Mother Asna. Michelle is doing the best to serve the community at large. And she truly loves everybody. And so, I mean, we have to be very understanding that there are times when even Michelle screws up too. It doesn't mean that she's a bad person. Really, it doesn't. In fact, if anything, Michelle would pretty much give her shirt to help a homeless man or woman or a child. I mean, that's just Michelle is. You know, she's she's been there for many people and she'll continue to be there for them as best she can be. She's not a selfish person. Look at all the videos she's been doing with you guys. I mean, my God, she's been doing so many. Compared to me, I mean, she's going out there. She's trying to reach out to the public and trying to bring peace to the world one person at a time, which I think takes a lot of patience and a lot of time to do. And so, I, I first of all, Michelle, I want to let you know that I'm very thankful that you are making an effort. Thanks, Slim. Okay. Now, by the way, also wanted to let you know that uh, this winter, Michelle is planning on having a nice winter. I.e., when we say winter is nice, meaning Michelle wants to try to find a happy balance with snow and the proper amount of cold. But Michelle also told me is that there's a lot of misinformation going on about climate change. And I can tell you right now, from what Michelle's told me and from what other scientists um, have told me, there's a lot of baloney. There's a lot of false truths. So let's get some hard truths for you. The biggest climate changer is not on Earth. It is the sun. The sun has been had been running hot for a while now because it's caused heating up of all the planets in our solar system. Now. Nobody is in Mars. Nobody lives in Jupiter. Nobody lives in Uranus. Nobody lives in Neptune. Nobody lives in Pluto. Nobody lives in Mercury. Okay, for example. And yet, the temperatures as reported by many of these planets have been many degrees higher than they were in the normal statistical average. Now, I think that that tells me that something's obviously going on. It's not helpful when you start belching out more CO2 from your tailpipe and increasing particulates in the atmosphere. That's true. But to say that it's all mankind's fault is absolutely does not match the archaeological record of the environmental studies because we see that the weather trends are... Um, we have, we're getting ready to leave the interglacials and we're starting to get ready to enter a glacial... What was it? Glaciation? Glaciation. Glaciation. Meaning, it's going to be snow it's going to be getting colder. How fast is it going to get colder? I can't tell you. But I can tell you this: is that we have had a very wonderful ten thousand years of interglacials, and now it's time to accept the fact is that things are going to start turning around. It's statistically ah, uh, it's been statistically proven without a doubt that at the interglacials is when it's the warmest. And it has been approximately every, for a period of about 10,000 years with the glaciations occurring about what, every 190,000 to 100,000 years? Yeah, about 90,000 to 100. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's, you know, it's something to consider. So the point is, is that for those scientists, you want to talk about climate change, that's fine. But stop blaming it on people who are using incandescent light bulbs. Stop blaming it on people who drive their SUVs around town. Okay, let's let's be honest here. Okay, if you can walk, walk. If you can use less electricity, do so. But not everybody can do that. Michelle had done everything she could to reduce her carbon footprint. I don't think she's done as bad as she had could have, but I think Michelle has is obviously is aware that. What about the other um, side effects of other ways of reducing carbon footprint? We're talking here about CFLs and regular fluorescent lights as well, because they both contain the same materials. Phosphorus, 
fast forwards and of course um mercury and of course electronic battles contain um tin lead um various types of components in the parts such as capacitors and resistors and things like that a lot of e-waste in those things it's not at all environmentally friendly let me just remind everybody we're just gonna ready to wrap this up and let you know that as far as the kinds of bulbs a person uses um do you think that cfls are really better than incandescents do you really think they are mm -hmm. well let's look at some facts here when Michelle had incandescent 100 watt light bulbs in these fixtures, this room got so unbearably hot, you could basically could roast an egg in here. Okay? Now, because each fixture uses a 75 watt CFL, oh, I'm sorry, 25, 45 watt, 45 watt CFL, 6500 degree Kelvin bulb, its room doesn't really get that hot, so it stays pretty cool. Um, second thing is, is that, um, it has a nice daytime type color temperature, which is perfect for the studio. But CFLs are not perfect either because, um, many of the electronic ballasts have been known to burst into flames if there's any electrical malfunction. Um, several houses have burned to the ground because of that. So, you know, you need to keep in mind that especially since these bulbs are made by the cheapest people possible is that a lot of them do not have any safety um considerations like overheating or um protection from fire so one of the questions i wonder is is why they couldn't make one that just basically has a ballast that's made well and then just replace the glass part of the bowl as needed in fact, many cases, it's not the bulb itself that burns out. It's the ballast. So if you have Sarah ballast and a Sarah bulb, you could buy the part that needs to be replaced and leave the other part alone. That's what I would have done. Yeah, I would too. Especially, like you said, um, for those of you who've never seen these bulbs, do you want to show them what the bulb... Yeah, well, I'm going to get a bulb here. I'm going to show you what we're talking about here. Now, this is a bulb that Michelle bought from a company called Julia Studio. These are the ones that we're using. The problem with this bulb was this bulb was DOA right out the bat. And she was supposed to bring it down to have it recycled but never got a chance to. And so this is truly dead, dead, dead. It does not work. And Already, you can see some looking inside here. You can just about see the innards. It's got these little slits for ventilation on it, and it smells burnt. It smells burnt too. So, again, I wonder what happened to this one. I don't know. Could you use this if you took you could probably, you know, what you could do, Loom, is if you wanted to, you probably could very carefully take the base off and hook this thing up to a standard 40 watt ballast and then it would work fine it would, would work perfectly well in that case okay so Marzil, you said it's the ballast that went bad it's not the bulb it's the ballast bulb is fine but because this contains mercury you can't just throw this in any old garbage can very bad juju. Very bad juju to do that. Exactly right. So we have to dispose of this in a proper way to recycle. And I went through to try to find out in the area who does mercury recycling. And in my area, one store that does is Home Depot. And another one is Lowe's. Will allow you to bring these bulbs home for proper recycling um, to their center. So... Still, very nice bulb. Very, very nice bulb. Kind of big. But kind of cute. Yeah. All right.
right, so I think what we'll do is, again, I'd like to remind all of you, please do send us comments. I have always asked you to do that. To do that, you can send a message to L-U-M-I-F-I-N-I-S-T-R-A at gmail.com. And for those of you who are reading, watching this video through Michelle's postings and you know our, our, my actual channel is, you can use a tiny URL to get there. It's a lot easier. It's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.tinyurl.com forward slash L-U-M-I-F-I-N-I-S-T-R-A and I'll bring it right to my channel and so you can check it out there. So I'm going to let you go. And by the way, we're going to be getting a new camera soon. I don't know what how this is even going to come out. Michelle is trying to get the video equipment to work better for both cameras All right now. So right now we're using the Formac Studio software for this video. And uh, we we'll probably will be, hopefully this will come out fine. And uh, when the new camera comes, we're going to have a good video working. We are, except I don't know if VD is going to work very well. I, I got to work in some cases with PAL, but I had problems with that. So it'll be definitely a, a play every year. Definitely. All right, guys. Listen, I'm going to talk to you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and, and let me know. Uh, oh, by the way, if anybody wants a bum light bulb, it's in physically good shape. You just need to find out what's wrong with the ballast on it. Let me know. And um, give me your email address. I will send it out to you. Okay, how do you like that? I'll give you a free label. You make it work. It's yours. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.